Will you love the you you hide? Will you quell the fear inside? Hello, you're more than welcome to this Open Table Network online worship service. My name's Kieran and I have the privilege of being the Open Table Network coordinator. Welcome to all of you joining us from across and beyond the Open Table Network of communities across England and Wales. A special welcome to you if this is your first encounter with the Open Table Network, or if you are in a place where a ministry like this is not yet present. The Open Table Network is a partnership of Christian worship communities in different traditions, which welcome and affirm people who are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer or questioning, intersex and asexual, or LGBTQA for short, their families and friends, and all who seek an inclusive church. This month, our worship is on the theme of coming out, as the 11th of October is marked around the world as Coming Out Day. Why do we come out and why have a day to celebrate it? For too long, members of our communities have had to hide in fear for their well-being, their livelihood and their lives. A constant fear of being rejected by friends, loved ones and community has led many of us to remain in the proverbial closet, hiding who we are from those who should be our nearest and dearest. Coming Out Day challenges this injustice and encourages those of us who live with gender and sexuality that's beyond the false binaries of our culture to be proud and reclaim who we are. Coming Out Day is not just designed to help people feel comfortable about coming out about their gender identity or sexuality. It also applauds people for their bravery and helps create awareness of the struggles and difficulties we experience. Coming Out Day was created by psychologist Rob Eichberg and activist Jean O'Leary after they marched with around 500,000 others to the capital of the USA, Washington DC, in support of Rights for Our Communities on the 11th of October 1987. The first Coming Out Day took place a year later. Coming Out Day is based on the belief that prejudice against LGBTQIA plus people thrives in an atmosphere of silence and ignorance, and that once people know that they have loved ones who are LGBTQIA plus, they are far less likely to maintain prejudiced or oppressive views. Throughout the world, LGBTQIA plus people are coming out of the closet, proudly proclaiming who they are and standing side by side with their allies for a more equal and accepting tomorrow.
Gathered together, we proclaim the good news of God publicly, intentionally and explicitly. This community joyfully affirms God's love for LGBTQIA plus people. The presence of God welcomes the fullness of who we are. We are people who desire, who long, who practice love in many ways. We celebrate love in all its forms. Love for God, neighbour, kin, beloved and self. Love that is sexual and asexual. Love that is spiritual, erotic, emotional and intellectual. Love that is queer and love that is collective. We are people who want to know and be known for who we've been, who we are and who we are becoming. We honour identities in transition. We delight in authentic self-expression, whether trans or non-binary, intersex or cisgender. God moves in our becoming. How wonderful are the many works of God's creative hand. May all who long for love's embrace feel their holy worth. As Adam and Eve came out of the earth, as the people of Israel came out of slavery into freedom, we come out. As the exiled Israelites came out of Babylon back to their home, as the prophets came out of the ordinary to point to the extraordinary, we come out. As Lazarus came out of the tomb to continue his life, as Jesus came out of death into new life, we come out. We come out of our deserts into the garden, out of the darkness of closets of all sorts, into the light of new life. We come out. Out of exile into our homes, out of lies into truth, out of denial into affirmation. We come out. We name ourselves as God's beloved, trans, non-binary, intersex, cisgender, bisexual, gay, lesbian and heterosexual children. Each of us brought out of ourselves to reveal God's love to the world as the saints of the church. Blessed be the God who has made us. Blessed be the God who continues to call us further and further out. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Should trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nothing, Paul tells us in his letter to the early Christian community in Rome, can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Do you believe this? 
Have you ever been told that your gender identity or sexual orientation or anything else comes between you and the love of God in Jesus Christ? If so, did you believe it? How does this reading speak to those of us who come out, who claim a new identity, not just or not even as a Christian, but as a person whose gender or sexual orientation may not fit into the binary of male and female, each attracted to and finding their deepest bond and companionship with what's commonly called the opposite sex. The present day expression, coming out, originated in an early 20th century analogy that likens a homosexual person's introduction into gay subculture to a debutante's coming out party. A celebration for a young upper class woman who is making her debut, that is, her formal presentation to society, because she's reached adulthood and become eligible for marriage. Historian George Chauncey wrote that before the First World War, gay people did not speak of coming out of what we now call the closet, but rather of coming out into what they called homosexual society or the gay world. A world neither so small, nor so isolated, nor so hidden, as the modern image of the closet implies. Barbara Glasson, until recently the President of the Methodist Conference, the governing body of the Methodist Church in Britain, described the coming out process in her outstanding book, The Exuberant Church, Listening to the Prophetic People of God. She reached this insight after listening to the stories of the groups which met in her Liverpool church including two LGBT Christian communities, of which I was a member. In writing about the process of coming out, Barbara describes how it takes an unusual and specific sort of courage. As an openly gay Christian man, I can vouch for this in my own journey, from disquiet and inner struggle, through self-acceptance and living a secret life, to rites of passage into a community of solidarity and towards a place of integration. And as coordinator of the Open Table Network, I've heard stories of hundreds of LGBTQIA plus people of all ages. So I think I can say with some authority that courage is indeed a defining characteristic of the process of questioning our identity and claiming a new identity which defies the dominant norms of culture, society and faith. Barbara writes, I believe it is both profoundly human and part of God's intention that we live life in all its fullness. Ultimately, coming out is a transformative process that can lead to fullness of life. As our prayers today show, our Christian story contains many unexpected reversals or moments of coming out, from the exodus of God's chosen people out of slavery to God creating new life out of the suffering and death of Jesus. In the reading we've just heard, Paul reflects on the liberating power of Jesus' call to new life. For us, that call is about claiming our identity as beloved children of God, made in the image of God, chosen by God, to live the full diversity of our identities, not to hide who we are for fear of condemnation. Paul promises us that no one can condemn us as Jesus is at God's right hand interceding for us. No one can condemn us, not parents or politicians or pastors. As beloved children of God, made in the image of God, God's chosen people, we can be confident of the infinite, unconditional, intimate love of God in Christ Jesus, from which nothing can separate us. Paul makes a list of things that cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He includes trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger and sword. He continues, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. What would be on your list of things that cannot separate you from the love of God? 
How would your relationships with God, yourself and others change if you believed Paul's words applied to you? What would be different in your daily life? We can become stuck in despair about our lives as LGBTQIA plus people in inhospitable and prejudiced churches and communities. Or we can come out of our despair and live a new life. Paul promises, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Jesus' love for us can overcome all obstacles, even homophobia, biphobia and transphobia. Do you believe this? Dare you believe this? US Bishop John Shelby Spong writes, whether we are male or female, gay or straight, transgender or bisexual, white or black, yellow or brown, left-handed or right-handed, brilliant or not quite so brilliant. No matter what the human difference is, you have something to offer in your own being. Nobody else can offer what you have to offer, and the only way you can worship God is by daring to be all that you can be and not be bound by the fears of yesterday. As we move into our time of prayer now, let's ask God to show us how we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. O oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens and the weight of glory. Listen now to our heart's longings for the healing of our world. Let us pray. We pray for those who cannot or will not come out. We pray for those who have come out recently or have been forced back in. We pray for those who are filled with hate. We pray for those who are overwhelmed by fear. We pray for those who oppress. We pray for those who suffer under oppression. We pray for ourselves and those on our minds, for who we have been, who we are and who we may become. We bring our prayers together in Jesus' name, for we are convinced that neither closets or haters, neither fear nor phobics, neither who we have been, who we are or who we become, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and God's grace in Christ. The word Eucharist in Greek means thanksgiving. It's one of the words that Christians use to describe that central act of hospitality of our faith. Our remembering of Jesus' last meal with his friends before dying and rising to new life. We also call it communion, which means sharing in common. As we cannot share bread and wine in common today, as an act of spiritual communion with one another and those who have gone before us, 
we share this prayer of thanks. Thank you to the queer and the trans ancestors who left us histories to hold on to. Thank you to every child who is the first in their class or their school or their town or their family who made it a little easier for the next one. Thank you to the elders who fought for yourselves and for us. Thank you to the ones who let your freak flag fly. Thank you to the ones who do queer in your own way. Thank you to the ones who take each other in. Thank you for kissing in public and holding hands in the street. Thank you to the ones who share their scars. Thank you to the ones who hold space. No pressure. Thank you, loud ones. Thank you, quiet ones. Thank you to the ones who helped us learn to love our desire. No more shame. Thank you to the ones who helped us love our trans, non-binary and intersex bodies. Thank you to you who are doing what you need to do to survive. We need you. Thank you for persisting. Thank you for proclaiming. Thank you for being. To you who have shouldered the losses and taken the hit and been fired, betrayed, beaten, bullied or isolated. Your pain is honoured. Your contribution is not forgotten. You deserve so much better. Thank you. Once upon a time, they could say they didn't know us, but not anymore. Here we are, bringing our sacred strange into their pews and pulpits, to their dinner tables and computer screens, and beside them in waiting rooms and in checkout queues. No apologies. They are so lucky to have us here. Thank you to you who are yet to come, who will expand our understanding and help us love more deeply ourselves and each other. Thank you to every queer beloved and trans beloved who keeps choosing to live and choosing to love and choosing to support each other. Amen. 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 Thank you to all who have contributed to making this online gathering possible. Too many to mention all by name, but you will get a mention in the credits at the end. While you're here on our YouTube channel, why not subscribe to receive notifications of future updates? If you'd like to keep in touch with the Open Table Network, Please subscribe to our e-news on our website, opentable.lgbt, where you will find details of our communities across England and Wales. If you're able to support the growth of the Open Table Network, you'll find details of how you can do that on our website and in the description on this video. So, let's go out with hope of new life in Christ. Go out in truth and grace. Go out as one who is known and loved by God. Go out as you are, bravely and authentically. And as you speak truth and work for justice, you can be sure that God goes with you. Ahead of you to clear the way. Beside you to sustain you when the road is rough. And behind you to pick you up when you are weary. You do not walk alone. Go in peace with courage and let all God's people say Amen. In solidarity with all those whose stories have not yet been heard. Tell our story